Hello again, I'm John Terzak, and today I'm going to answer a very interesting question, but it's going to take me five days to answer it for you, and that is how to make your own home-cured and dried filet of beef tenderloin brujole, a very Italian specialty that uh, if you want it, you have to make it. It's not a, You can't go out and buy it anywhere unless you happen to be in the middle of the midtown New York City, at the right, in the, at the right place, you know. Um, what I have here is I have a tenderloin of beef that's been completely cleaned. This is a center cut piece and it's about two pounds, okay. I'm going to cure this in some salt overnight and then tomorrow I'm going to take it out and put it in the fridge and tomorrow we're going to come back together. We're going to take it out of the salt, we're going to brush all the salt off, we're going to put some herbs and some spices and some garlic and some pepper on it. We're going to wrap it up in cheesecloth and tie it up. And I'm going to hang it on that pot rack. And today's Monday, so tomorrow, Tuesday, we're going to put it on the pot rack. And then Friday, or maybe as late as Saturday, but probably Friday, we're going to pull it off of that rack together. You're going to see it come out of the cheesecloth for the first time. And then we're going to make a antipasto kind of appetizer item that's famous and famous in Italy, but not something that you can get very often or even available in the U.S. Filet of beef rajol. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take, I have some sea salt here. You can use kosher salt. I would stay away from the iodine laced regular table salt. I'm going to lay the bottom of this pan. going to put a big layer of salt in it. We're going to take the fillet, we're going to set it right in the middle of the salt. Then we're going to cover the rest of this fillet with salt, like so. You got about a pound and a pound and a half of salt here. Now I'm going to take a wet towel that I have here, and I'm going to lay it over it, like so. And then I'm going to plastic wrap this container, and I'm going to put it in the fridge. And tomorrow, exactly 24 hours from now, we're going to come back and I'm going to take this out of the fridge for the first time in front of you on this camera and proceed to set it up to dry for three to four days. So I'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Okay, it's exactly 24 hours later. I'm back to the refrigerator. I have not looked at this curing center cut piece of filet. And let's take a look at it. Looks good. There you go. That is got all the cure that I want to, that I want to see on it. That's perfect. And you certainly don't want to over cure these for any length of time beyond what's necessary. And we're gonna rub this salt off of this filet completely. You see how it's taken on a slightly different look. You're still completely raw and untouched in the middle. Because one of the key things about making this is to be able to have it medium rare to medium in the middle when it's all said and done after it's dried, which is exactly what we're going to have. Okay, we got the uh, Lion's share of the salt off of there. Now, what I did here was I mixed some dry herbs here. I have oregano, thyme, basil, some rub sage, and some tarragon. And I've got some dried red chili peppers here that I'm going to use. And I've got some garlic and some olive oil, and some black pepper. So let's mix these herbs up, and let's get some oil on the filet. I can't wait to eat this on Friday, by the way. I think this will be the longest time elapsed video I've ever done. Five days, you know? So we're going to get some garlic on there.
and we're going to roll this in these herbs. sprinkle a little bit of this chili on here. I'm going to put a little bit of bite on here. When I went shopping to make this, I was looking for mustard seeds and they didn't have any. It's another good thing you can impact this with, uh, but I chose to go with the herbs because they were available. Okay, now let me rinse my hands off for a second, then we're going to wrap this up in cheesecloth and tie it up and hang it up to dry for a while, as in three days. So I have a piece of cheesecloth that I bought at the supermarket. And i got about a three or four foot long piece here. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to lay our filet in here. Fold it in, and we're going to roll it up. This cheesecloth allows this fillet to breathe during this drying process, because if it couldn't breathe, it wouldn't be able to dry, because if nothing would ever evaporate. This drying process is exactly what it sounds like, an evaporation process. And that curing of the salt overnight is what prevents it from going bad at sitting at a you know room temperature. So let's take a piece of string. Now this doesn't have to be tied any special way because it's not like we're roasting it or something like that. I want to tie it so I'm at the heavy end on one end hanging from the top. Make an initial knot on it, and I just want to tie it in a way that will keep the cheesecloth attached to it, that's all. Now, when I get up to the top here, I'm going to make myself a little loop so I can hang it on the pot rack hook behind me, up above me. Okay, there you have it. There's your cured filet, seasoned, ready to be dried for about three days. Let's see if I can get this on one of these hooks, which I can. There you go. That's the perfect place to hang it to, because number one, you're not going to forget about it. So, that's the end of this part. I'll see you on Friday. Today's Tuesday, and we're going to open that up. For the first time together, slice it, put it on a plate. I'm going to show you some really neat garnishes. And just by looking at this stuff, you're going to say, that looks really good. So I'll see you on Friday around this time, three days from now. It's Saturday, not Friday. I let the brujol dry for an additional day because when I was feeling it, it felt nice and medium rare. And I thought today would be the perfect day to finish it off and show you what it looks like and we, of course, will find out what it tastes like, but hopefully you will if you ever get a chance to make this. So, first, let's get this thing off of here. So, it's, it's the first time I've taken it down since I put it up. Now, let's get the string off, and let's find out what we got here. And we are going to slice some of this, and we're going to set up an appetizer version on a plate here for you with a whole bunch of little goodies attached to it. And by the way, you can do this with a pork loin, or you can do this with a pork fillet, but everything is done faster, including the salting part. You can do this with duck breast that's folded over together as a double and tied up. I'm 
this is one of those things that you don't get to test very much until it gets to the point where it's at right now. So I'm going to brush some of this extra herb off. I think we got all the flavor out of there that we're going to get. so I can work on it. Okay. Let's see what it looks like inside. Let's just cut it right down the middle. Oh, look at that. Look at that, baby. It's medium rare, but there's really no blood blood per se, okay? So now we're going to make what I would consider to be an appetizer portion or a lunch main dish on the patio during the summer. So let's slice some of this up. We're, by the way, I'm going to give some raspberries, some Parmesan cheese, a little radicchio salad, some papaya, roasted peppers, fresh oregano, Curled Parmesan cheese, olive oil, capers. This is going to be a fun little plate when we're done, okay? First, let's get it sliced up. Let's start by placing it right on there. Now, don't remember now, this is filet. You can treat, you can use these individual pieces, cut smaller on pieces of uh, toast like canopies. You can even pound this out a little bit and stick something in it and roll it up. A lot of things to do with this. You can dice it up in big pieces if you want and mix it into pasta. It's um, pretty, pretty versatile. It's a little bit, think of it like prosciutto. Now, can I make it bigger? Do I want to make it bigger? Yeah, I'm going to make it bigger. We're going to treat this as a main dish, but of course, if I have it on a main dish size plate, though, too. Remember, if I put this on a smaller plate, then I can cut less on it and still fill the plate up. We don't want an empty, half-empty plate. Okay, that looks like a good start. Now, I'm going to make a little miniature radicchio salad. to uh, set in the middle of that. Got a little bit of radicchio here. We're going to make some shredded or almost chiffonade. Put that in a bowl. Got a little piece of prosciutto here just for fun because I happen to have some around. Thought it might be kind of fun to just mix some of that in there. This is not something that I've never even done this before. The uh, but I just happened to have some prosciutto for another lesson I'm teaching today. So I thought I'd put some of that in there with the radicchio. And let's hit that with a little pinch of olive oil and a little bit of pepper. And I'm going to skip the salt because the prosciutto and this have enough salt in it for me, I think. So let's put this little mini salad there. Let's put um, let me see if I have room for more mini salad. Let's open this up just a little bit. There we go. Let's put the rest of that little mini salad. Yeah, this is a we're we're talking a lunch entree, and this doesn't even have to be in the summertime. This could be any day, any time. Okay, let's take a little bit of roasted pepper. Season that a little bit. Let's put that on top. Now remember, you can make this as a large hors d'oeuvre version of all of this. Okay. I've got a little roasted pepper there now. I've got a little bit of goat cheese here. 
in a pastry bag that's nice and soft. And I'm going to put a little bit of garnish around here. And I have some, you're going to get a kick out of this. I have some, I have some fresh papaya here. And I have a half a papaya that I use this little miniature melon baller on to make all these little melon, little miniature melon papaya balls. Let's put some of those on the top of these goat cheeses. Remember now, you could be doing this on a large tray and uh, be using larger balls and larger florets of goat cheese at the same time. Kind of playing this one by ear today just for fun because I know I can get away with it. Um, we're going to want some fresh oregano. I got a few little sprigs here. A little fresh sage wouldn't hurt either, as long as you don't overdo it. So a little bit of oregano on there. Nice. Now I have a larger papaya ball that I got out. Let's stick that right on top of there just for fun. And let's do this here. Let's put a raspberry. Now you, I want you to imagine this on a larger tray too. You can make a really uh, easy decorative tray. And also you can refrigerate the brujol and keep it in your fridge after you cure it and dry it like we did and take it down. And keep it in your fridge wrapped tightly in plastic wrap for a week, up to two weeks possibly. Okay, so let's throw a few capers on this dish. Not many. Let's put some olive oil on this dish. Oh yeah on the cheese directly too. Nice, nice, nice. And let's put a little bit of pepper on here. And let's put some Parmesan cheese curls on here. All of a sudden now, this has just turned in to something really cool. I gotta tell you though, I've made Brajol sandwiches too, and they make great little mini sandwiches. Let's put a little bit of cheese on there. I think one more will do it. Wow. I'm ready to eat this thing. You can you know that. So there you have it. How to cure and air dry in your own kitchen a filet of beef tenderloin and produce what's known as brujole. Now there's another brujole out there which is where meat is pounded thin and stuffed and kind of rolled up and fixed with toothpicks and sauteed. Made a lot of that in a northern Italian restaurant I worked in as a chef when I was a kid but uh, this is the other brujole. This is the one that you really want to know how to make because you can't go out and buy this. And, it's a rare Italian restaurant that even serves this and makes it. Enjoy it. I'm about to.